know, I was watching uh, Dr. Pandit uh, uh, from another table, and it was so wonderful to see a vice chancellor, no less, taking notes when the other speakers were speaking. I think, you know, what uh, Professor Sahasrabuddin said in the morning that we are all lifelong learners, it really is true. Uh, I think it's wonderful to see teachers taking notes. Uh, you know, it's usually uh, the other way around. So thank you so much for joining us. Um, you know, going back to your old, uh, to your alma mater as vice chancellor, how does it feel, especially a uh, university which has been so much in the news and not necessarily for the right reasons? Yeah. yeah. Thank you so much. And I thank Kaveri and the new Indian Express for inviting me to this conclave. Uh, Chennai is my city. I'm so happy to be back here. Can we have a round of applause, please? And uh, both her parents are actually from here. Yeah, from Chennai, yeah. uh, Madras 28. And my father started his first job at the Indian Express as a sub-editor. <laughs> so it is great homecoming. And thank you so much in 1949. Wow. And VK Narsimhan, one of your famous editors, was a good family friend. And one of my grand uncles was the editor of Andhra Prabha, oh, the Telugu, Telugu, yes. So very close. Thank you, yeah. Kaveri, for this. And now back to JNU. It has been, I've been very happy to be also the first alumnus to be the vice chancellor. First woman, woman. first alumnus. Wonderful. Great, yeah. great number of firsts. <laughs> Thank you. And I think JNU is a wonderful campus. Hmm. I know off late we have been known for uh, the wrong reasons, which I think only 10% or even minuscule minority are in it. And any institution does have such. But I think it is one of India's most inclusive and socially committed yeah. universities with some of the best uh, research and academic programs. Right. Uh, you have said, you in your letter said that uh, you're going to have an Indocentric um, uh, approach. And of course, that has raised a lot of hackers, <laughs> especially with the CPIM, yes. which immediately shot off uh, uh, a counter note. But um, uh, take us through what this approach is. See, I basically believe that uh, JNU is known not only for dissent, it's not or, it is and democracy as well as diversity and difference. Kaveri, I also represent diversity and difference. I've gone from the state of Tamil Nadu to JNU. Yeah. So in JNU, you can't just have one hegemonic narrative. What the left says is it's only our way or the highway. So it doesn't represent diversity. They don't accept dissent. They are the hegemonic uh, narrative. So when the hegemonic narrative does not accept any dissent, then where is the diversity and difference? And there is no democracy. So the question is, if you want the coexistence of multiple narratives, you ought to have them. And one of those multiple narratives is the Indic narrative or the Indocentric. What do I mean by that? I basically mean that the Indian civilization, we are the only civilization state other than China to go into the fourth industrial revolution. Right. China has a narrative. Why has India not a narrative? We need a narrative that is different from the Abrahamic or dichotomous narrative. Either or, or does not represent our civilization. Hmm. Because there's nothing called either or, or for us. For example, you take the figure of Ravana, who is uh, venerated in the south as one of the great Shiva Bhaktas. He had only a small, what to say, a negative flaw, as a flaw, a flaw in his character. His attitude. Uh, right? You can't call him Satan. He had a lot of positive qual So how are you going to look upon such multifaceted human beings? All human beings have multiple identities. So it's not, you know, dichotomous as the Western narratives give us or frameworks. So I was just suggesting that we as Indians, why don't we develop narratives that can also come from our culture, our civilization? There's no harm in it. It can be even Tamil. Kannagi can be a symbol of feminism, Indian feminism, as Draupati or Sita as the first single mother. Yeah. Why are we, I don't think feminism came in only with the Marxists coming in. 
I think we did exist. Nobody could be more braver than Draupati, who did ask her husband questions, which we don't ask even today. Hmm. So what is it that we should be so ashamed of or ignorant of? Because if we want to be a major global power, it is the intellectual narratives that will make us that. So I was calling for multiplicity. Yeah, but it was, uh, of course, seen as uh, an assault on the diversity that they are so proud of. What is the diverse? They don't rep See, this whole diversity that has been in JNU is only within the left. Hmm. Those of us who don't belong to the left have no diversity, or we are the marginalized communities. But, you know, when you talk about identity politics, mm. uh, you know, there's caste, there's class, there's gender, there's sexuality, there's so many different yeah. uh, uh, marginalities and so many identities. Why, and, and uh, our culture is renowned for acknowledging all that, so why has JNU, which is uh, considered one of the finest in the world, why has it not been able to do that? Surely it's not a complete hijack by the left, or do you believe that there was just no way that no, anyone else, anyone else's voice was allowed? I think it was more because I think there was a contract between certain forces that happened when it was initially brought in as a university. And then uh, it slowly developed into that. But I do agree with you that uh, off late, at least in the last uh, one decade, there has been a lot of alternatives that yeah. have come in. And it has been accepted as well, though grudgingly. But then I think it is good for JNU also to develop alternatives. And you're right, identities are there, but at least in JNU, we must give the credit that these identities are not as sharp as they are maybe in other universities. JNU has become a sort of um, uh, a microcosm of this great ideological debate that is playing out in the country as well. It, yes. You know, it seems to have every possible <laughs> element of it. Now, if I were to ask you, what are the five things that you want to do immediately to, as you said, bring back the Indocentric narrative, what would you say? I would basically first, I wouldn't call it, I would rather want to make uh, JNU much more holistic. First is to remove the negativity that has been assigned to JNU, unfortunately with the Tukade Tukade. Which of course people have accused you of using as well on Twitter. <laughs> no. That Twitter account of mine was morphed. Okay. I never had a Twitter account called Shantishri D. I had one called Shantishri 11. And six years ago, when my daughter was applying for jobs in the US, uh, she totally removed that was Shantishri 11. She removed it, it for you? you completely Why? Had, because she said, Mom, don't write political ideas. Okay. Like, because even there, the campuses are left. Right. And she didn't, because she said her, she, she wouldn't get a job. Okay. <laughs> so it was, remo I, it was totally removed. Right. This was morphed because one, I think it was constructed thinking that I was a Maharashtrian and uh, this thing because on Nathuram Godse and other yeah. things and me abusing minorities, never. I never did such things. And within one hour, my daughter complained and it was done so strategically. The letter came out. Yeah. And by the time I went to, uh, you know, take over as the vice chancellor, so I couldn't even, I couldn't access Twitter because I was not on Twitter. But my daughter being a cyber security engineer helped oh, me she with is? this. Yes. So she did it and she complained to Twitter and within one, there was no blue mark also, meaning no it was not a verified account. And I congratulate people are very smart at conspiracies. I hmm. love it. Hmm. And uh, it was removed within an hour. Okay. You know that. So we can establish that it was not mm. you. So let's go into a more constructive dialogue. Yeah. What is it that you hope to Mainly do? first I want to make the campus much more student centric. Right. I've been talking to students. I've been making surprise visits to the library. That See, 80 to 90% of the students are not ideological. They're there to study. Yeah, they've come there to yeah. study. They, are, they come from, many of them come from very marginalized Absolutely. backgrounds. So I, when I went to the library, the main demand was to increase the timing of the, we have a Gopalan canteen, which right. is one of our better canteens. So to increase it to nine o'clock, which we did, it doesn't right. cost us any money. Then water, meaning mainly drinking water, 
uh, what to say, all our facilities are right. very dirty and toilets right. are miserable. Right. So these services we could do easily, we have done it. Then prop another major issue is infrastructure. Yeah. JNU has a major infrastructure issue, but we are trying to work out. The government has been extremely helpful. I, we have a financial deficit, so we'll have to we work out with the ministry. The third is a lot of uh, our uh, recruitment has to take place. Both teachers and non-teaching staff, nearly 300 positions are vacant. 300? Uh, yes, and 450 in the non-teaching. Okay. So uh, I've started the procedure. I have no permanent registrar or a controller of examinations. So even those we have advertised. Right. So we are now going in very, what to say, aggressively for recruitment as well as promotions. Many right. of them are stagnating. So the, again, this that teachers should feel that the system is not stagnating them. Right, that they, there's some uh, mobility for yes. them. Yes. And third is uh, basically to make the university much more holistic hmm. and vibrant. See, when we say we are diverse and different, I want different ideologies to exist. Hmm. Whatever, everybody hmm. can have their ideologies. In India, as Amartya Sen said, we are the argument argumentative <laughs> Indian. So everybody can have, there's no issue. But I want everybody to have it and the right to speak. And fourth is to make it a much better gender sensitive hmm. uh, campus. Uh, especially I want to help women self-help groups to right. run some of our dabas right. and others so that, and also gender equity. Uh, we have decided to have a gender development index for JNU. Okay. We have more than 50% women students this year. That really? main, yes. Well done. So that uh, we want to see really that whether uh, there is gender equity. Right. And we have, do have issues of uh, many of our professors having issues with women students. So we want to work it out how we could create a better atmosphere. That's a full yes. stack of things yes. to do. You're going to be very, very busy. Yes, and finally, we want to make our, uh, what to say, graduates more employable. Yes. So skilling yeah. and whether we can have, uh, what to say, collaborations with industry. Industry has several demands. Uh, recently, we had a Taiwanese company wanted to teach about 2,000 mechanics and others whom they have employed to teach Mandarin, Taiwanese Mandarin. And JNU is the only university that has the resource. Right. So we have done, decided to run an evening certificate course okay. online for them. Right. So you're, you're taking a lot of initiatives. You right. have to, otherwise, how does, otherwise JNU will continue to be just the repository of identity politics. Yes. What will you do about the political parties? They will not allow you to function, no, will they? They'll get ice. Left and right. <laughs> Look, I think Kaveri, they'll get totally uh, marginalized when the majority is with you. Hmm. See, everybody wants things to go well. Yeah. All my 90% of the students want JNU to be what it is because, you know, they, they need their employability. Yes. They don't want to be rejected as a university that, you know, brings out people who... Exactly, which has happened. Them. There's yes. been a sort of a stigmatization, yes, stigmatization of the university. Yes. And uh, students have really suffered as well. Very much. Yeah. And uh, so I think the 10 percent who want to get into politics or who want to use this as a stepping board for getting into politics, they are a minority. And I think we should take them also. I've been talking to different groups. That and is important, yes. isn't it? Uh, have you, uh, because I think the sense was that the authorities are not in a mood to listen to us, that we, and we've seen terrible violence as well. I mean, 2020, we all know those terrible scenes of, you know, st students and who, who knows who they were yeah. walking around with masks. What do you do with, with such a volatile situation? I think basically, because I'm a student of JNU, we have seen to it that we don't push it to that end. Yeah. Uh, I know that most students are hungry, so whenever they come to meet me, I have allowed accessibility to faculty and students to meet me anytime. And if there's something that is an emergency, so I always give them enough food to eat, <laughs> samosa and tea. Half the revolution is gone. <laughs> and then they talk very sensibly. I've yeah, we're always <laughs> hungry. Yes. Yeah, they're very hungry. 
So I usually feed them first and then I talk to them. So you'll have to have a Ganga, Ganga Dhaba, right? No, right. Ganga Dhaba, or we have uh, Aravali. I've, made, I've right. made a pantry next to my office okay. where I do give them what to say. I treat them very well. Mm -hmm. In the Indian tradition, Right. of Atiti Devo Baba. Right. So the guests are students, so, they, so by the time they eat and then they drink their tea, they're much more cooler in the head. <laughs> so that no, works. Sometimes it is simple things that mm. make a difference to students. I mean, what are they? 20 years old, 21 years yes. old. I mean, where they come from all sorts of yes. states and families. I mean, we've seen that. Yes. Uh, they, you, they have to be dealt with empathy, right? Yeah, very lot of empathy, and they also realize that there is no campus like JNU. Yeah. JNU is a sociological island. Yeah. It creates a delusion that everything is free. Yes. <laughs> we charge ten rupees and twenty rupees a semester. Wow. Still. And Isn't that <laughs> terrific? I wish every university was like so that. So I tell them, don't get bogged down by this delusion because right. there's no free meal outside. Yeah. So you better get out of it and take it only a phase in your life. But so that phase, of course, we know sometimes lasts for 10 years. No, now we have put in systems into the system where we do not allow people to stay in the hostel. Hmm. We had recently had a student agitation, which we resolved, where we had a sit-in in one of the schools to, you know, start offline classes. Right. We said only 50% can be taken in. Right. So we formed a committee of faculty who went and spoke to the students, right. and the students agreed, and they called off the agitation without any problem. So I think uh, talking ends up in resolving. Right. So we've talked about students, uh, faculty. Uh, they can be as difficult and as tempestuous and as mercurial. They don't like attendance. They don't like to be asked questions if they want to go abroad for something. I mean, they have all sorts of demands and they are after all scholars, you know, you have to respect that. How are you handling them? See, we have two major teachers unions. Yeah. So I've told them that I don't recognize either. <laughs> Come in as faculty, hmm. we will talk and resolve. And one of the unions with the effect of my effect becoming with, uh, what, what shocked them the most is that what they talk for and the, but the first woman we see comes from the opposite side. Right. So I have one of their teachers union having all three women in all the three positions. Yeah. So I know even the teachers union. I think teaching. the who, who I think Aisha is yes, one. Of, yes, Aisha yes, yes, is yes, one. Yes. Yes. And the other one. Uh, Suchitra Sen okay. and uh, Utpal Dutt's daughter, Banu Priya Dutta, okay. I think. So wonderful. So you're yeah. like all, all all women sisterhood. Yeah. So we, it's a good effect. Yeah. I think it's a very good ripple effect. And teachers basically is promotions. Yeah. They want better promotions and uh, faculty advertisements. So we are doing that recruitment. So um, uh, you talked about uh, women. Do you think all it needed, and the world should know this, all it needs is a woman to run a place and it is immediately, uh, things immediately get resolved. Do you think it is that, it's a particular way of dealing with conflict that uh, is also unique uh, to us? Or uh, is, it, is it just that uh, experience has taught us that uh, you, know, you need to listen more than you need to uh, enforce? Uh, Kaveri, I would say a woman has to be 20 times better than a man oh, yes. to reach the same position he reaches. So it's a bigger struggle. And she does three jobs at a time. So she's a multitasker. Ashta Avadani are women. Because they have to look after the home, they have to look after the husband, they have to look after and work. So I think naturally when we come to positions of responsibility, we are much more sympathetic, much more flexible, and we understand the reality better. I wouldn't say we are superior to men, but as human beings, at least let us ask for equality right. and equity. So I think that way women do make a difference. What's your goal for JNU, let's say, uh, at the end of three years? What would you like to hear about it? I think uh, we are India's number one university. There's we no want, doubt about uh, it. We globally, I want to, we should become the Vishwa Guru. Right. Meaning we have to make, a, a, what to say, a narrative or a representation which is very original and very representative of India. 
I'm not, see, Indic perspective is not necessarily only what to say Hindutva or this. It can be Sankhya philosophy, which is as materialistic as maybe Marxism. Hmm. So why not that philosophy also there? So something that makes India intellectually a narrative where we can contest and, it. And original. Yeah, original. Which is what we have. Yes, we what, have. Right. And especially from Kashmir, that yeah. is where we get most yeah. of our narratives. You know Bharatanatyam, which was of from course. Bharata's yeah, Natya right. Shastra, is very popular in the state of Tamil Nadu. Right. So we do have an arts and aesthetic school where oh, we... Oh, it is mm, a wonderful school. Oh, it's yes. one of the best. Yeah, best. Yeah. So we want to become the Vishwa Guru or a, a major pathfinder at the global level. Wonderful. I do hope that you will succeed, not just for JNU, but also for women leaders as a whole. I think we need to prove that we can turn around something as complex and as supposedly divisive as JNU. Yes. I agree because that is also an Indic uh, narrative uh -huh. because the most powerful goddesses in the Indian tradition are women. Right. Tell me in which other tradition do you name your husband after the wife's name, Umapati, Sitapati, <laughs> Lakshmipati. No tradition in the world. Please be proud of it. And knowledge, Saraswati, power, Mahakali, wealth, Mahalakshmi. Portf most powerful portfolios with us. <laughs> we celebrate feminine power during Dashara. Because when all the male gods failed, it, it, to be a woman yes, it was a woman. <laughs> so here, please, this is a wonderful civilization which has given us a great, great tradition. Let us at least celebrate it. That is all I'm saying. I'm not saying other traditions are bad. Everybody is good and there is enough space for everybody. Right. Wonderful. I, yeah. hope, I do hope you succeed. Thank, thank you. Thank you so Prabhu. much. Thank you. May I request Mr. Prabhu Chagra to kindly Wonderful. join us on stage and we present Professor Santi Shri with a small token of her appreciation. Ma'am, it was definitely a conversation worth the wait for us. We hope and pray it was the same for you as well since you've been waiting half the day for this. Can we have a big round of applause for her, please?